I thought today I might do a little bit of a special reveal. But it's not this, which is under the rag. It's this. First, no, this wasn't free. I paid for it. I actually had it for a while. Something I seriously dislike about it, though, are these little bits. They're just really cheap and... I've had my experience with this set here and they you, know, you lose some they break, they bend but today these actually saved my skin because I needed one of these bits and I realized that oops but if you've looked at the title then you probably can guess what's under here so let's do a little bit of a reveal shall we now this was in the bin. Well, actually sitting in a box next to a bin as some sort of piece of junk that had been thrown out. And looking online, I found that they went for between 80 to $200, which was a bit of a surprise. Now, yes, this is the Model M, as you can see on the back here. And funny enough, this also used to belong to a local bank, well, at least a local branch bank. I felt really excited when I uh, saw this. I'd been thinking of getting one for a while. Uh, I did look online and I held off the idea of actually buying one. And this one literally fell into my lap. There's one downside to it. F6. The keycap for F6 is missing. So I went online, found an eBay seller who was selling the individual keycaps. Turns out they had F7, but not F6, and all the other keys were basically sold. That hit me hard. And then I found a website that acted like they were professionals, or they had these really weird photos of the uh, keyboards. Not something I'd consider an enthusiast to do. So I sent them an email, specifically asking if they had an F6 in this darker colour compared to this beige colour. They sent me a photo from their actual website, which was this beige color, and I decided not to respond. I'm not gonna list them in this video, but if you do wanna buy something and you're a bit sort of antsy about it, best not to waste your money. Or you can give it a go, it really depends on the situation. And just so you're aware, yes, I do have a photo of it on this camera, on this phone here, sorry. And this is going to help me when it comes to reassembling because I can't, don't think I'm going to remember where all the keys go. Always take photos. Now, the second thing is, yes, I do have the cable. I have already tested this on a system and it did work. I did try to locate my, one of the few USB to PS2 adapters that I have. Still can't find any, which is upsetting. First, I know this works. Second, no, I'm not going to go buy the USB adapter. What I would like to do is to modify it so that this can run on USB or Bluetooth. Turns out that's a thing. And I'm going to try to run it directly through PS2 instead of having to try to... I want to make it as plug and play as possible. So even if I don't want to use this keyboard and I've got another PS2 that I want to run through USB, I can do that. So. I'm going to first begin by disassembling this keyboard and I realized that I forgot a special tool. So I'm going to be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. Uh, something I've just sort of fully realized, the lighting in here is terrible. Outside it's overcast, it's cloudy, I, it's just not going to work. So I'm going to begin by first putting all the keycaps into this tub. I'm not going to have to worry about washing these, but I figured, well, why not just take them off anyway? Ah, so that doesn't come out so easily. Alright, I might leave that back on then.
before I start plucking those out, I might undo this case. That's not going to come out so easily. Ooh, that's in there tight. Also, this this keyboard does have a bit of weight to it. I should probably weigh it. But then again, I don't think I have a set of scales I could use. Oh well. Two. Yeah. While this works, it's not exactly efficient. I suppose if I do end up with a second one of these. Okay. off, flip upside down, or back up, sorry, and now it should just lift off like that. A video I was just watching before I started uh, attempting this myself, uh, this ribbon ca these ribbon cables do have a bit of a tendency to break, so if you notice the uh, when these LEDs aren't working, that's potentially why. And this is not as dirty as I was afraid it would be. Hmm. Whoops. I'll put that back on. Now, I, I don't know if you could hear it, but there was a little bit of rattling, rattling around going on. So, my concern will be... Uh, this keyboard is starting to fall apart. Uh, so those so far haven't popped out. Ooh. No, that's not right. Okay. So if I lift this up. Oh wow, that is definitely dirty. Okay, and it's not the design that I was thinking of, so... Now, one of my most invaluable tools will be a paintbrush. When you do repairs, whether it's computers or electronics, you'll find that paintbrushes where the bristles don't fall out are extremely useful. Although nowadays you can buy all kinds of fancy little things, sometimes the old classics do work. And so this point where I wish I wore a mask. In my opinion, IBM really cheaped out by using double-sided tape here. I mean, two little prongs sticking up where that little assembly would sit on for the LEDs would have been a lot better. So I'm going to take off the keyboard as well. Ah, oh, sorry, the space bar. You know what? Stuff it. Probably shouldn't shake it up like that, but... Don't really want to keep doing that. Man, the dust bag has been breathing in here for a while. Considering this was left out in the rain for a bit. Yeah. Ooh, and that's the thing I want to remove. Don't want to get that wet.
Okay, so I don't want to turn around and do like a 100% sort of... Oh, don't want to break that spring. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. Some of those rivets have fallen off. So like these little plastic things. Oh boy, that's going to cause me issues later. So these plastic rivets. Uh, I did watch a few videos over the last few months and I have re-watched one or two this morning before attempting this. And the plastic rivets are, it's a common thing for them to fall off. So on the back here, oh, I need to get that out. Come on. There it goes. So these plastic rivets will detach, break off. So you've got these, this. I'm going to give this a quick brush over. And then put it up here, hoping it doesn't break or fall apart. Oh, there's a question. What's this board look like? Uh, it's made by Lexmark Miners. Yeah, I'm not going to fully disassemble that. It's not my idea of cleaning it. off all the dust. Alright, so now I'm left with this handy dandy little setup. Now I feel very lucky that the only thing different about the whole case is this fact. They've put a cover over this, which actually is going to benefit me because it's going to mean that that's going to be pristine. But that asset tag's pack, uh, covering up that US symbol thing, so... Oh, well. I can live with that. Now we come to the actual cleaning part. And I'll be using water and these magic little sponges. Now I have a tendency to just simply tear them apart, they do tear quite easily. It's like a magic cleaning sponge you use in the kitchen, bathroom, wherever. Uh, I have seen people use these to clean other retro products before, and I figured, well, this does a good job in the bathroom, so why not here? And I should probably take away the bottom part first. I mean, with this I'm only worried about the dirt that's built up on here. From potentially being left outside and who knows where else. And the other thing is because it's a sponge it can get into a few of the hard to reach places. And it does make the whole process a lot easier on you. I'm going to grab my rag. And this thing I use in the bathroom as well, it's a bit rough and that sort of helps. Since this material is basically an abrasive, they just fall apart on you.
Okay, so this bottom piece. Well, it looks better. And that's really all I was going for. I'll be using this. So this is just your average sort of Australian dishwashing detergent. Anyway, I'm gonna go put some hot water in this and be back in a moment. And I'm back. So what I've done is I've been able to submerge these into some warm water. Add in a little bit of detergent. Take the lid. And then I'm going to give it a bit of a shake. And that's why you don't fully trust them. Yep, they're all going to need a bit of a wash. Okay, now comes the next part. So what I'll be doing is I'll be laying the keys out on these two microfiber cloths. And that brush didn't do such a good job. <clears throat> but it's obviously a lot cleaner than it was before, so I'll have to do with that. that will have to do. <clears throat> now I'm going to grab the original back for it, all nice and clean, kind of, and reinstall the actual board itself. Now first, I want to make sure that this PCB goes in nicely. Or I can do that second. There's only one little latch for it, which is a bit perplexing, but. Ooh, this little black knob here snapped off, which you've got over here, so that's missing. This side isn't. But that doesn't look like it will cause any major problems. So that should be the keyboard back in. Now I need my phone to start doing this reassembly process. Uh, where's that photo? Here it is. So to start with, 
I'm going to move those out of the way. Move these forward. So after that amount of time, ooh, these are still not dry. Um, so I can't put these keys back in yet. But these ones, one of the videos I watched stated the guy waited about a day for him to fully dry. And I just don't have that kind of patience. So to start with, I'm going to be reinstalling the arrow keys just to ensure that I've got them around the right way. Uh, just bump up the brightness. Now according to this, the arrow keys should all be sitting on the left for the up and down. So I've got these around the wrong way then. Now I had them up the right. So those two are right. Now, a little bit weird. Oh well. Okay, so the arrow keys are done. Now, I look at these keys and they definitely look like there's something wrong with them. These arrow keys are driving me nuts. Why won't they go back in properly? Um, I screwed something up here with these. Uh, okay. You are not down. You are up. That's definitely you. That's definitely you. There we go. That looks a lot better.
So we have that mostly assembled now. Man, this feels good. I need to figure out how to dry these in a quicker manner. Maybe gravity will help. So it doesn't matter where they go. Now, what about the space bar again? No, that's still wet. Hmm. Caps lock. Yep, that's definitely still wet. Anyway, let's see what this looks like so far with the top on. Because, I mean, really, I don't need to have the whole top of the case off, so I can do a partial reassembly. Make sure to lock that into place. Flip it upside down. And I can get back to reassembling this thing. So... Put those screws back. And put that little bit back. And I'll grab this one. Well, that didn't break. It can start to lift a bit because of that water. So I damaged it. Rats. Then I'll take a little bit to dry. Damn, wasn't as secure as I thought it would be. There. Now all I need to do is to get these dry enough so I can put them away. Uh, I'm going to pause it for a little bit and then get back to it. Alright, so I started using these Q-tips. Uh, here's the, I picked these up, I think at Kmart, an Australian Kmart, not the US Kmart or wherever, Australian. And I just sort of jammed them in and tried to soak up as much moisture as possible. Anyway, I think for me, now this is done, and no, I didn't put the space bar back on, I was just resting it in there. The space bar, perhaps one of the most annoying keys when it comes to doing a keyboard reassembly or clean out or restoration, whatever you want to call it. So first you have to get it locked into those little notches down there. Wait, how does it go? Oh no, they're poked this way, so... Looks like they'll just slide in. Okay. Or is it supposed to sit like that? How does it sit? Well, I'm assuming it's going to sit like this. There it goes. Okay, let's 
get the shift keys in. So shift and shift. Looks like they relatively go in the same spot. Ooh, hang on. No, they've got their own little socket areas. So that's useful. Backspace. The enter key for the numerical keypad, which goes over here. Zero. Enter. The plus key. And caps lock. about this, the cable. So first, I'm gonna put this aside and leave this here. Well, I get myself some soapy water. Back with the soapy water. Well, not soapy yet, so put some of that in there, close it up. Ugh. Man, this container's terrible. To think I bought these to put food in. I'll be using this one because it's cleaner for the drying part. Put my phone out of the way. I haven't got any inside the PS2 port yet, which is useful. Just try the end. Ooh, I felt a cable stretch in that. Probably don't want to pull too hard on this. Downside is I'm not seeing much of a difference once I've run over this with the rag, which is a bit of a shame. But by the looks of things, dirt is coming off. So I'm going to dry it for now. And I'm going to use some isopropylene. And if you're anything like me, you know this stuff stinks. Ooh, that is strong. Ooh.
Honestly, I cannot wait till I can get myself an ultrasonic cleaner. That'll be good. Okie dokie. This part should be, for the most part, done. Whoop. Okay. So I will just wipe up this water. Get that out of the way. And say that, okay, this is clean. Okay, so while Windows loads, I'm going to check number lock, I'm going to check cat's lock, and I'm going to check scroll lock. So, all three work. Good. Uh, so many websites. Ooh, this one looks a lot better, actually. So, let's go escape. 1, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6, F7, F8, F9, F10, F11, F12, Print screen, scroll lock, pause, squiggly line, one, two, three, four, five. Number lock dash star minus seven. Oh wow, that's not responding correctly. But what happens if I enable number lock? Seven, eight, nine, four, five, six, one, two, three. Enter. Yeah, those two work. Zero and dot. So, keyboardtester.com seems to be a little bit better. Okay, I'm happy with that. So, for now, what we have is a functioning Model M. Uh, what a prize. And to think, someone simply threw it in the trash, or the rubbish, or whatever you want to call it out really nice and clean it's just that f6 is driving me psychotic this one however really nice to get a replacement key but not 100 percent necessary so i'm going to let this laptop turn itself off i'm going to call this video finished and i'm going to be shocked at how long it actually took anyway this is the end of the video Hope you liked watching. If you didn't, you know, whatever. Anyway, bye.